Alrighty guys, let's talk about some practical application of Creating Meals Master Course. By the way, if you're not already subscribed to my Patreon, definitely check it out because you can get these videos two weeks earlier as well as vote on topics, get interviews with the gods, and a lot of other really great stuff. Tiers start at $5. Alrighty guys, whether or not you celebrate Easter, you might have family that do and who might want you to contribute to a meal. So let's talk about some ways you can make that meal magical. For me as a Sylvania American, I have a very specific idea of Easter that I showed last year. However, if you are not of any specific culture and you don't really know what to do for an Easter meal by yourself, no worries. I've got some ideas that'll make sure you have more on your table than just Cadbury eggs. For most traditional American Easters, if you type in dinner ideas, you're gonna find, uh, I think, the classics, right? A good spiral ham, maybe some things like a potato and onion gratin, which sounds really wonderful. And you'll notice there are a few key vegetables at play too, like asparagus, uh, like carrots, right? And all kinds of other things. There's even maybe some lamb if you're really looking forward to it. And Frankly, I've never heard of having mac and cheese at Easter, but apparently that is an option too. The general consensus seems to be bread, potato, some kind of root vegetable, and ham or lamb. Which, if you go to your local grocery stores, you will see that these are in fact in abundance. Early spring vegetables like carrots, like asparagus, and brussels sprouts will really shine on your table. But it's true that there are a lot of options, and when you have that many options, it's kind of hard to figure out a direction. So let's think about the basics of spring and, of course, the basics of a meal again. As we just saw looking around the store and looking around online, we see that there's protein, there's starch, and there's vegetables. And these are the typical ones you're going to find. But not everything really plays well together, so let's take a look at the Kitchen Witch's Feast to see if we can get any inspiration from the inside. Since Easter's in April this year, I'm thinking of Aries. Which this book says isn't just about fire and Mars, but about Earth too. And since carrots are already very sweet, combining them with some roasted beets is going to go really nicely together, especially with the right herbs. This book also has a spring equinox feast which you can draw on as well. Notice again the pea and all these other things like radishes and also allium. Allium is the onion family, and while there's not a lot grown at this time of year just yet, one thing that is popping up in my little herb area here are the chives, which are indeed a part of the allium family. While you've already got your carrots roasting, if you throw some potatoes in there and have some fresh chives on the side, that will be delicious. But pause, as you might notice, we're not really dealing with our typical spices here like cinnamon and such, but more springtime flavors, herbal flavors like rosemary, thyme, marjoram, and all other kinds of really nice floral and light flavors. And not only in the main dishes, but in any kind of desserts too, they're going to play a great part. Your lavender, your chamomile, anything else like that is going to make a fantastic pairing with your springtime dishes. So for me, some roasted carrots and beets with these herbs would do fantastic. But now, as for the bread, as a Slovenian, I'm often using pizza, of which there are many beautiful flavors, the most classic of which being this walnut one. However, that is a massive undertaking, so if you don't want to deal with that, no worries. We've got all other kinds of breads that you you can look at for your Easter table. At its most basic, bread is pretty simple, but you can make it more intricate with Easter breads like this, and yes, that is a whole colored egg in that braid. But you can also include things like mushroom bread, like cornbread, or like sweet bread, which will go fantastic with all those herbal flavors we mentioned. But if you've been watching this series for a while, you know that there's more to it than just the main course. And don't worry, because we definitely have some appetizer ideas, namely with all those eggs. You're already going to be boiling and coloring a ton of them. And that means as an appetizer, you can either just leave the eggs just as they are as a beautiful centerpiece and an appetizer or you can dress them up in things like deviled eggs. There are a lot of traditions around boiled and colored eggs, so definitely include them. And for dessert, the most classic one you can do is some kind of carrot cake. You can have carrots in the vegetable portion, and you can have carrots in the dessert portion. And if a whole cake is a little bit too much, try making a cupcake batter that can go just as well with a bit of a cream cheese filling. Between this and all of the Easter chocolate you know you're gonna have, you're gonna be quite set for a wonderful day. And if I had to go back to basics on this, this is the kind of thing I would be making for my Easter meal. Whether you're spending time with family or having a second spring party, I do hope you get a lot of magic out of your springtime meal. Enjoy!